Well, good afternoon and welcome to Lits and RV, where today we are broadcasting live simultaneously on our website on Litson.com, on YouTube Live, and also on Facebook Live here in our marketing studio, where today we're only one mile north of the Winnebago factory based right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to welcome all of you to today's exciting live interactive presentation, where today we are going to cover all of the mid-year running line change improvements to the 2020 Winnebago Touring Coach Travado. Uh, today, off to your left, we have a 59GL and right behind me, a 59KL. And today, we're going to walk through all of the mid-year running line change improvements to the Travado series. And really, what Winnebago has done over the last few years is anytime they have an opportunity to drop an improvement into manufacturing within their products, they're going to drop it mid-year as opposed to waiting for the next model year. So we have some great new exciting changes for Travado Nation here with respect to the 59GL and 59KL that we'll cover today. Of course we're going we're to take all of your questions live. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube live off to the right you'll have an opportunity to chat in your comments. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook live uh, you can very simply chat in the comments down below. And if you're watching on our website on Litson.com uh, you'll also have the opportunity uh, to chat in those questions off on the right. Uh, moderating in our chat today as we take all of your questions live, I want to welcome Heidi Thompson. Uh, Heidi is our Vice President and General Manager here at Litson RV. I also want to welcome our marketing team, uh, Rhonda Gertis behind the camera, uh, Hope Litson, and also Maggie Breister. And really all of their hard work when it comes to creating great digital content for you, our guest, makes today's webcast possible because we can cover really just the changes and, and really provide just you know snippets of, of real good content for you in terms of not having to go through the entire coach because we have wonderful high definition walkthrough videos um, on all of our Travato B vans uh, as well as the rest of Winnebago's lineup. Also keep in mind that we can do this same type of a live interactive presentation on any of our in-stock RVs here at Litson RV with any of our factory trained consultants. We have the ability literally to drop and go live with a virtual interactive presentation from the comfort of your own home or office. Uh, we can conference in a partner, a spouse, and just have a great three-way dialogue with respect to things that are important to you, uh, which we do on a daily basis for our guests here at Litson RV. Any burning critical questions before we take off? No, let's get into it. Okay, so today we're going to cover um, really three different compartments. We're going to cover the exterior changes for the 2020 model year. We're going to cover the interior changes. Uh, and then we're going to cover some things that are specific to the lithium series. And really we're just talking about changes that have been made um, within the mid part of the 2020 model year, if I can say that. It's so early in the model year. Um, but we're going to start with just some exterior changes and we're going to start with a couple of the can't see, some things that just aren't readily apparent from looking at a Travato uh, and, and really it takes a little bit of um, knowledge in working with a factory trained consultant to make sure that what you're getting is the latest and greatest with respect to uh, what some people refer to as a 2020 and a half. Although there really isn't such thing with respect to a model year, uh, it's pretty common uh, nomenclature out in the digital world. So one of the first can't see is, and this has really evolved from Winnebago's um, voice of customer research in which they really spend a lot of time dialoguing with guests in terms of how they use their RV and different mods or different modifications uh, that people do after they take delivery of their Travato. Um, one of the things that Russ Garfin and his team, uh, by working directly with our end users, our guests, um, saw that a lot of people were installing our Sumo Springs. And that's the first thing that we're going to talk about today. Um, the Travato now includes Sumo Springs both front and rear uh, and really what a Sumo Spring does is it will enhance stability, it will increase ride height, it will alleviate some sway depending upon how you have your coach loaded. And if you do any research on Sumo Springs you'll see that really there are three different compatible Sumo Springs uh, with respect to the Ram Promaster chassis uh, and they're color coded for easy reference. The Sumo Springs that Winnebago is installing now front and rear in the Travato are the black Sumo Springs. And they have densities of uh, negative 40, negative 47, and then negative 54. And the black Sumo Springs um, are really kind of in the midline of that um, at, um, 
at negative 47 in terms of density. How did I do on that? That's perfect. You didn't expect me to cover density, did you? I was ready you? to jump in there, but you, you have it. Bail me out on density? Yep. So again, Sumo Springs front and, year, front and rear for the 2020 mid part of the model year. Okay, so then let's talk about another can't see. Um, as you've seen most likely with the Winnebago Touring Coach Bolt uh, and the Winnebago Touring Coach Rebel, both B-Vans from Winnebago Industries, um, we've now adopted the same type of automotive style insulation uh, in the sidewalls and in the roof. So this is a, a CNC routed uh, EPS foam that really makes four season RVing uh, a lot closer in terms of the Winnebago Travato. So, Automotive style insulation now in the roofs and then also, excuse me, in the roof and in the walls uh, for the Travato. Any questions on those? We good? Okay, so um, many of you have seen over the years Winnebago has evolved to include a side screen door. And the side screen door, which is an aluminum extruded uh, side screen door, is now standard um, as opposed to it being option. The option now is a roll-off screen from a company that um, provides these types of screens. Um, they're manufactured in Canada. And the great thing about a roll-off screen is that it provides um, nearly 100% protection against uh, insects. It provides great fresh air ventilation. Um, but it's also very easy to use. Uh, you can leave uh, the perimeter of the roll-off screen uh, permanently mounted. Um, and then, and we'll showcase this here in a second, this fabric will very simply glide down and you can zip it closed. We then include um, magnetic um, ease of entering or exiting your RV, so very simple to use. Uh, it's a great new feature, it's now optional. It's not a significant cost. Um, we can also retrofit these to existing Travados. So after you unhook each of these, They'll glide down, and as you zipper them in place on each side, you can actually travel uh, with these screens down. And if I can get Heidi on cam camera, she can help me out with that. But um, very ease of entering and exiting because they have a magnetic enclosure that once you get close, it will snap right back into place. So really simple to use, um, provides some great insect protection, great fresh air ventilation, especially in conjunction with that Max Air Premium vent system that we include, uh, which is mid-coach. And it's just such a great screen. It's fine, so you really eliminate um, bugs and insects from coming in, but you, can, you still have good airflow and visibility, like you said. Has a cool little flap that you can um, hold that magnet together if you have a pet that's very insistent on, or figures out how to get out. <laughs> Yeah, right inside here, um, like Heidi mentioned, so thank you for pointing that out, uh, there is a little enclosure here. Rhonda, can you see that if you zoom in? Um, that you can actually enclose on the bottom side. So if you have a pet that's real intelligent, figures that out, and can figure out how to enter and exit, you can um, keep that closure to ensure that they're not jumping out of that magnetic enclosure for the roll-up screens. So again, that's optional. Um, in the Travado, it'll be on all of our in-stock inventory that we carry. Um, now starting with the lithium series uh, and again that replaces the standard aluminum extruded screen door. I do have a couple of questions for you as it relates to what you've already discussed and the first is from Tim on our website. Did they add insulation to the rear door and the passenger driver doors that you know of? Yes, yes they did. And he, uh, Fred is asking do you think that the insulation is identical to the National Parks model, same type and location? Uh, good question. Um, I believe it is. I'd want to validate that before I commit to tearing your wall apart and putting in National Park <laughs> Edition insulation in your Travato, but I would want to confirm that, but I believe it is. <clears throat> I'm sure it would be, just in terms of efficiency in manufacturing. But we've had just really um, great feedback from guests that have that type of automotive insulation. Again, it's CNC routed with EPS foam. Um, really, some of the benefits to it is that as you travel a lot of miles, as you know with insulation, it tends to settle. Uh, since it is automotive grade, and it, it, you know, automotive grade is kind of a slang term that's used, but really it's used because you know, a vehicle's bouncing down the road and it's not gonna settle over time. Um, we've, we've really heard some great feedback from uh, Rebel guests and also Bolt guests that we have out on the road right now 
that not only is it insulative with respect to a thermal break, um, but it really quiets the interior cabin. And so some great acoustic benefits as well. So continuing on with the exterior, um, we have a new Colorado Carefree powered patio awning. Uh, same length in terms of it being 13 feet. Um, however, it does um, provide a couple of new benefits. It does include a faster gear drive. So with the motion sensor that is embedded in the technology in the Colorado Carefree awning, if that motion sensor is triggered to retract that awning as high winds encroach your Travato, it's gonna come in a, a lot quicker to hopefully uh, minimize any damage. You can also now pair up the awning. It seems like nowadays you can pair everything up with Bluetooth, but you can pair up your Colorado Carefree 13 foot powered patio awning to your smartphone or tablet uh, to control the awning, uh, both in terms of extending and retracting. You can turn the lights on and off and you can dim the lights now through the Colorado Carefree app uh, with the new uh, Colorado Carefree awning. Any awning questions? No. Awesome. I like to hold up the question sec and then just keep them out of order later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as uh, Rhonda is a little bit more elevated on the Travato, a um, couple of rooftop changes and also be sure to check out some of the video work that Rhonda does in our video library with respect to the Travatos because we zoom in and cover all the components up on the roof. Um, but now um, we've increased the solar output standard to 230 watts from previous years at 200 watts. So a little bit more solar up top. Um, also with respect to what is up on the roof, you've seen this in some other Winnebago models, we now have a connectivity port or it's kind of like a, a little um, box that's up top there that allows you to bring in cabling inside the Travato. So it's almost like a pre-wire uh, that allows you then to connect things that we see people using on the road. So um, satellite TV antennas, um, more um, more likely though in a B van like a Travato, we see a lot of connectivity enhancements with Wi-Fi boosters, uh, cellular 4G LTE boosters. Uh, so whether it's a WineGuard Connect or um, a Wii Boost or those types of connectivity enhancements, it streamlines that installation with the connectivity port that's up on the roof now. Um, now has been brought into the Travato line, first pioneered uh, back with uh, some of our Class Cs. And I do have a question regarding that just getting ahead of myself a little bit on the racks, but how much, yep. they're wondering how much configuration have we done to fit more solar, fit a Connect 2.0 or whatever to the roof? How much flexibility yeah, is there? Yeah, so let's just jump ahead real quickly and then I'll come back to that question. So now um, with respect to the roof rack and rear ladder option, it's now completely metal. There are no plastic parts to it. So it's a stronger, more durable cargo roof rack um, the ladder now, which is the movable detachable ladder that you can access in different parts to access the roof of your Travato, um, now is also secured with a key lock. Um, but with respect to the cargo rack, um, we saw a lot of this this summer now that we've gone to this new uh, cargo roof rack that's all metal. Uh, the brackets up top, once you relieve the nuts, will slide back and forth. And if you don't have that much of a cargo carrying capacity that you need up top, uh, in the roof, um, you can actually remove one or two of those struts. So like for example, in the 59 uh, KL, if we move the first strut back and actually remove the front one, there's plenty of room for a Connect 2.0, a WineGuard Connect 2.0. But there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can reconfigure that roof rack. Also with respect to the solar, um, even unique to the 59 KL, the slimmer panel can actually be moved back. Now there are, if you get really, really detailed about it, um, there can be a little bit of compromise in performance. You'll probably get a little bit more shade coming off of the air conditioner. Um, you probably won't have maximum gain with a um, Wi-Fi booster or a cellular booster, but it's really gonna be immaterial. And you know, as we work with our master RVDA certified technicians here, and as we speak about it, we really haven't seen any noticeable degradation in terms of performance of satellite, solar, or connectivity enhancements. How do you? Great. So Besides we can a really long-winded answer no, to a simple question. Okay. So also we have new running boards. Um, they're a little bit wider. Um, they also remove um, the corrugated nature that some of the feedback that we were receiving was that um, uh, they were dirt collectors. 
Um, in fact, some, uh, some recent um, social media posts that I saw just touched on that today um, with one of my friends who claims to be a pirate. But um, wider running boards, um, they now have a non-skid um, layer running over the top with the Flying W embossed logo. Um, and then we also have on each side, um, we also have secure tie-outs for securing a pet, uh, but also for high-end bicycles. Uh, we continue with the undercarriage lighting. And uh, if you look at some of the pictures that we have in our vehicle display pages for any of the Travados, we black out our studio just to really give you a feel for how much illumination that provides. Uh, Rhonda uh, Gertis just does such a great job with that. And so undercarriage lighting continues. Um, no longer is the electric step even available with the running boards. So easier to access, um, we get rid of the corrugated areas, non-skid uh, Flying W um, embossed non-skid treads, and then the tie-outs on each side. Okay, so then continuing on with the exterior, um, this black paint that runs mid-coach to ensure that the coach looks more automotive-like uh, so that we can try to skirt around some HOA requirements. Um, this black paint that now surrounds the trim of the windows so that you don't see these windows just sticking out, um, this black paint is now standard. You'll see a majority, if not all, of the Travados that um, we offer uh, at Litz and RV here um, include the deluxe feature paint package. And I'm just going to slide over here on it because it's a little bit easier to see and you can just zoom in. Um, so then this plastic cladding that surrounds the wheel wells and the front bumper then is full body paint um, with the silver metallic or the granite metallic deluxe feature package. So it includes the front bumper, all of the shrouds um, surrounding the wheel wells. That's all now painted uh, to make it look a little bit more like an automotive um, application. Also, you'll see the stainless steel valance has been removed. Um, again, trying to make it assimilate more of an automotive style look. Uh, but then again, the deluxe feature paint package is the front and the rear end. But that standard black paint now will be on every single Travato manufacturer, regardless of whether or not you, did, you do the deluxe feature or not. How am I doing on questions? Good. I'm wrapping up the outside, so if you have any ones, any other questions, let me know. Also, one thing that's not really a, a critical um, item, and for some of you, hopefully it doesn't even exist, but with respect to winterization, um, you'll see a lot more of the labels that Winnebago uses will follow a step-by-step -step pr procedure in terms of winterization. So a little bit easier to use with respect to winterizing your Travato. Hopefully you don't have to, but if you do, it'll be a little bit of an easier process. Fire away. Okay, so can you get the wheels that were offered with the National Park Edition on a regular Travato or Travato Lithium? Yeah, so the, um, the method wheels uh, that you see on a National Park Edition Travato uh, or the uh, Winnebago Revel, um, you can install on a Travato and we've done it. Um, we've done it on a handful of occasions already. Um, but again, uh, there's a couple of different method application wheels. Um, really what people are looking for is that kind of that matte black finish. Um, probably not so much with respect to the Travato in terms of running at lower um, PSI or lower air pressure. Um, but if that's something that's important to you and you do take off-road, um, we can certainly offer the Method 701 wheels that feature the, um, uh, the lip technology so that you can run your tires at a lower PSI, a lower air pressure if you do a lot of um, off-roading. Are there add-on clips or clamps for the racks? Yes, there are. Uh, a lot of different attachments that you can do, a lot of which are universal, uh, but if you're looking for the specific summit attachments, um, our parts department here at Litson RV can help you with those as well. Can you clarify on the roll-off screens, are they available on the back or just sides? You bet. So the roll-off screens that we just demonstrated um, are currently only available, and I shouldn't have said currently because for the foreseeable future, I'm not aware of anything for the rear, um, just for the side screen door entry. And again, that replaces that aluminum screen door. Uh, the rear will continue to use the um, snap-in screens that we've had in prior years. Awesome. <clears throat> Great question. Um, we have a viewer on our website who's picking up a KL from us this December, and he's wondering if, if the 2020 and a half version includes dual pane windows. Uh, so dual pane windows, which are actually acrylic sights windows, 
and they really include dual pane properties. Um, it's not actually a thermal dual pane glass, um, but those sites windows are an option uh, in any model, whether it's a G, a K, a GL, or a KL, uh, not standard in any of them. And one more question just before you get to interior, and then I have more questions. Um, just to follow up on the installation, did you know, did they add the same installation to the floor as well? Uh, not to my knowledge. Perfect. But again, I would want to validate that. Okay. You said perfect because it was a short answer. <laughs> All right, so let's cover some interior changes. We're going to continue to take your questions live, so be sure to chat in your questions, uh, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or our website. And that's what really makes these so value added for you, our guests, is the fact that we can communicate with you live. So working on the interior, this is a 59KL, and uh, one of the reasons why we selected this is because it does include the new interior wood. Uh, this is the Colombian walnut uh, interior uh, in terms of the hard goods collection. Uh, this is the Mecca um, soft goods collection, uh, referring to the interior fabrics and the floors. And you know the, the ultra leather or the catskin leather, depending upon which chair you look at, um, or even the soft goods within either of the two, whether it is um, um, previously blue or if it's Mecca, they're very, very similar. Really the difference between those interiors are the flooring. Um, this is a new interior cabinet offering. This is Colombian Walnut. Uh, it is still the high-end investment that we make uh, from Techniform, which is an Italian yacht cabinetry manufacturer. Um, and again, you'll see this in our walk-around videos, but we invest in this because it's extremely lightweight, so it frees up all of that cargo-carrying capacity uh, that RVers are sensitive to, um, but it's also moisture-resistant. Um, so the two interior hard goods collections with respect to the cabinetry would be this, the Colombian Walnut, or the High Gloss Macchiato that we had in previous year uh, that will continue, and you'll see both that we offer um, within our inventory. Uh, so, so one option that... I shouldn't say it's an option. One new offering in the interior. Um, this is the new Coleman Mach NDQ, and I'm just going to turn that light off so that you can see this. Uh, the new Coleman Mach NDQ, or non-ducted quiet air conditioner, uh, does include the omnidirectional vents. Am I okay here, Rhonda? I'm sorry? Trying to get everybody to speak on camera. So, um, omnidirectional vents. Uh, it does have a thermostat uh, that is built into the shroud. Um, but one of the great things about it is, again, you can pair up your smartphone or tablet um, to enable Bluetooth app controls uh, for the NDQ. Um, one of the benefits to the NDQ is it is slightly quieter uh, than previous models. Um, it, and again, it includes the omnidirectional vents and then the thermostat, Bluetooth connectivity. And really one of the bigger benefits is that in auto mode, it actually turns the blower off. Uh, when the compressor is not running. So it um, provides a great opportunity if you do have pets that are in your RV uh, or occupants that are less knowledgeable, uh, you can walk away from it, keep it thermostatically controlled, ensure that it's not going to kick on when it doesn't need to, uh, certainly not disturb your neighbors if you're in a, in a quieter area, um, but also works out really well with our lithium models because literally you could uh, keep an RV in the middle of a parking lot in stealth mode and have that air turn on or off to keep your pet safe, um, but literally no generator running or no, sh no shoreline plug-in. Cookie on our website has a question, when the air conditioning is running, is it loud while sleeping, would you say? And what, if you go out, how do you handle leaving your pet? So um, that's a good question. Um, Hope and I, we sleep with quite a bit of white noise, so it certainly wouldn't disturb us. Um, the new NDQ is quieter. Um, we've seen reports of six to eight decibels uh, which really isn't completely noticeable to the naked ear. We hear some reports where um, people are, are thinking it's extremely quiet. Uh, it is quiet. It's certainly palatable. Um, it's, it's not a rumbling air that we've had in decades of, of RVing where it really you can't even carry on a conversation. Um, so it does provide some white noise at night. Um, when you walk away from the RV, if you have pets or people that aren't as knowledgeable inside the RV, um, you can set it to automatic mode, um, automatic mode in low or high. Uh, and then it'll just self-regulate as there's a call. Um, granted, we're in a 21-foot enclosure, um, not even quite 21 feet, uh, tip to tip within the interior cabin, and with the additional insulation, um, it really doesn't take that long to cool down the RV, uh, but also with all of the additional insulation, 
it really will maintain a lower temperature a lot more efficiently than in the past. Any AC questions or are we good? We're good. Okay, so also um, you saw with the um, debut of the National Parks Edition, uh, that limited run of 100 Travados that included a package of items. Um, one of the things that Winnebago debuted that we also had in the Winnebago Revel and now in the Bolt, um, also with respect to the Travado, is we have ram mount tracks that are located throughout the RV. I'm gonna challenge you there, Rhonda. Um, we've got some great still photos and also some great video work um, on our vehicle display pages. But the ram mount tracks are universal. So really the goal of it is to enable you to mount your smartphone, your tablet, or the different connected devices that RVers use. You could use those as televisions, as monitors, and really provides a great opportunity to mount those really anywhere that you want using those universal RAM mount track systems. We have the RAM mounts, a, a wide variety of those uh, here in our camping supply store, um, but also you can purchase those online. Can you explain in a very elementary way, sure. otherwise I will, um, what a RAM mount is and what you would attach to it? Okay, we get so this question a lot. Yep, so a RAM mount track is just this aluminum extruded track. And inside of it, get really simple, is a sprocket, but it actually just <laughs> slides into the RAM mount track. There's a knob that tightens it down, and then you can adjust the viewing angle, what location you want it in, and then depending upon which RAM mount um, you purchase, uh, usually there's two to four different um, kind of rubberized prongs that encase your smartphone or your tablet um, to keep it secure in travel. A lot of people will use those up front on their dash currently, um, but now you can buy larger ones based on the size of your iPad or um, any other type of a tablet and literally use those for streaming music, for streaming television, for um, downloading any content and playing it back. But you can put it in different positions in this, for example, in the 59K uh, with the twin beds that could be used as additional monitors or televisions. Was that third grade? That was great. Or was it fourth grade? No, that was really good. Okay. Okay, so then we're also gonna just slide to the back and I'm gonna challenge Rhonda a little bit more. We also have now Winnebago's marketed anything keepers. These are mesh style storage bins. Um, that are generally mounted right over the bed. You're seeing this in a lot more models, um, but really logical because you can place your smartphone, your tablet, reading glasses, books, things like that in these anything keepers. You can still run cables through the rear where they have cable grommets out the rear and then store those back up. So um, a great opportunity to place your smartphone, your tablet, um, reading glasses, books, that type of thing uh, right above your headboard. And then in the bottom, of the mesh area, it almost feels like a, um, a liner that you use within your kitchen so things aren't gonna slide around. And then they store and they recess back up against the ceiling of the cabinet inside. Did you get all that? I have a question and I'm gonna cool. mispronounce this. Sure. But will, I think it's will a lagoon or a lagoon table similar to that in the bolt be offered on the KL instead of their current rear table? Yeah, that's a good question. And a lagoon table um, is, is commonly used. You see a lot of it in some of the internet forums that people use. Um, it's, it's a flexible table that includes basically attachment and then will slide. Um, the same type of a table exists now in the Winnebago Bolt. Um, we have not seen any design plans to include that in the Travado. Um, a couple of reasons um, for that. Um, within the respect to the 59K or the KL, um, that pedestal table that we use also provides the slat space uh, for converting this into a flex bed. Also, the lagoon tables tend to be a little bit um, larger and you'd have to find a home for it to store in transit, um, but certainly something that we could customize for a guest in terms of adding a lagoon table. You bet, good question. And hopefully I pronounced that right. I Googled it quickly, I couldn't find it. <laughs> okay, last interior change, and then we're gonna jump into lithium and cover even more questions. Um, so the new ultra leather cab seat option, which previous years was cat skin, um, will eventually be migrating back over to um, ultra leather. Um, I say eventually will, um, because they'll continue to um, run through cat skin in the interim. Um, but this will migrate from a cat skin high leather to the ultra leather that you've seen us use 
uh, in RV applications for decades. So again, we can cover any questions that are important to you all. We covered the exterior, we covered the interior. Um, we're now going to cover a few changes that are specific to the lithium models. Um, the first is, again, it's kind of a can't see, um, but with respect to the Pure 3 energy pack um, that's mounted in the previous location where the generator was occupied, uh, that now includes the 110 volt heating pads from Volta Power Systems. And so that will work in conjunction with the Trumacombi Eco Comfort Plus system that will provide radiant heat off of uh, the Trumacombi system, whether it's off of an electrical element or off of the LP system, uh, and then also includes the 110 volt um, heating pads encased in the Pure 3 Energy Pack, which is mounted in steel. Um, again, kind of between the cross rails of that rear axle. And a question that comes up a lot is, are they, is there a switch? Are they automatic? Yep. Yeah, and there's a lot of confusion in this because we still have the heated drainage um, feature, which is now, stand, or excuse me, it is still optional, um, but the heated drainage option, which includes a black and a gray tank warming pad, which is designed to allow you to drain the RV in sub-freezing climates. A lot of people mistaken that switch for the 110 volt heating pads in the Volta system. Um, it is actually automatic and it's thermostatically controlled. Uh, within the new heating pads that are included. A question uh, from Fred is, do you think that the auto start function is reliable enough to trust cooling pets with the air conditioning well away from the van if you're hiking or whatnot? Um, absolutely, and that's really its primary design. Um, and we have a lot of guests on the road that are using it explicitly for that reason. Um, with the auto start, whether it be um, in activated mode where it'll tap the, the horn or in stealth mode. Um, that's going to kick on between about 25 to 35%. And, um, you know, field tests, and we've got a lot of different documented examples of this, about an hour of it running in high idle mode, and maybe even more now with the, um, the heavier duty alternator that I'm going to talk about in a second, um, you can get about 30, 40% additional state of charge um, off of a one hour time, um, one hour charge period. Um, one of the reasons why that's made possible is the 58 volt um, under the hood alternator now is a 160 amp as opposed to a 120 amp that we used in previous years. Um, so about 30% more charging output um, out of that under the hood alternator that recharges the Pier 3 energy pack. Any questions on those? Uh, not yet. Okay, so um, then the last item that we'll cover with respect to lithium changes um, is in the state of charge gauge. And that really is one of the biggest benefits of Winnebago's automotive grade um, lithium models is that um, it's just the simplicity in use. Uh, the state of charge gauge um, and the button that's associated with it is literally one touch on and off operation for using your RV. And the new state of charge gauge is recalibrated um, to show the remaining energy that's available for the coach as opposed to the true state of charge. So it's, it's really more like a fuel tank gauge and it, it's recalibrated now to show uh, the usable life of the Pure 3 energy pack. Um, it's also now color coded, um, so it will turn blue if the energy pack is too cold to take a charge. Um, then when you plug in, um, in conjunction with that Truma Combi system, the heating pads will take over, warm the pack, and then it will automatically start charging. And great improvement and really a result of Winnebago keeping in touch with users and owners. And Volta has been such a great company to work with. Um, you know, obviously we're a high volume uh, Travato dealer and a high volume lithium dealer. Um, but we work with um, Jack Johnson and his team at, at Volta Power Systems um, literally on a weekly basis. And so one of the benefits of working with our team here at Litson RV with our master RVDA certified technicians is not only our relationship with Volta Power Systems as well. Who have trained our technicians and are in our store uh, as often as we need them. You bet. So some great enhancements then not only to the exterior, the interior, but then also to the lithium system. Um, specifically for the 59GL and the 59KL behind me here. So let's cover questions as we wrap up today. 
Okay. We have a few questions on our YouTube channel. Um, Lisa <coughs> is wondering, can you swap out the propane stove for an induction? Uh, we can. Uh, we can swap out that LP stove for an induction cooktop. The only downside to that is keep in mind that you're still going to need the LP system for that Truma Combi Eco Comfort Plus system because it uses um, either an electrical element, the LP system, or a combination mix thereof. Great question from <clears throat> Ted on our YouTube channel. On a non-lithium 59K, yep. is it a benefit to swap out the standard AGM batteries to two lithium? And are there other changes that would be required to do that? Yeah, so uh, good question. Um, so what, Ted was it? Ted. Uh, what Ted is referring to is a drop-in lithium battery solution compared to the um, true automotive NMC grade lithium solution that's in the 59GL and 59KL. A drop-in lithium battery solution um, is always a good idea. It's just a, it's just a cost benefit discussion. The other challenge you're gonna have, and we have this with some of our other models, is cold weather use. And so those batteries with a lithium solution, um, they, they can't freeze. And so um, with the location of the batteries within the Travato, if you're constantly in warm weather climates, it's probably not a concern. Um, but if you are in colder climates, you wouldn't want lithium batteries to freeze. But it can be, and again, it's just a cost and a benefit. These are extremely high, quali high, um, high quality um, AGM absorbed glass map maintenance free batteries in the Travato, um, but we could upgrade to lithium. Another good question on our YouTube channel is are, there, are they planning to use the energy setup of the new Travato on a Rebel? Uh, good question. We get that question a lot. And we do pose that question to Winnebago quite often. The challenge is finding the space for it. Uh, the space for the um, automotive grade um, energy pack, which a competitor has found that with. The difference though is Winnebago also uses a 3600 watt pure sine wave inverter which provides complete 30 amp control of the coach. So you can literally turn on that state of charge gauge, make sure the inverter's on and you have complete coach electricity top to bottom as though you were plugged into 30 amp service or if you were running a generator. So much different solutions and sizes of inverters um, and the challenge is the size. Jack on our website is saying I'm a larger man and I was wondering if the driver's seat is powered. Is the steering wheel tilt and telescoping? Is there <clears throat> is a room for someone who's a larger person? Uh, he's checked out both the Ford and Mercedes and both are okay. Yeah, so then I'm feeling very confident that you're going to be okay in a Promaster. Keep in mind the Promaster chassis is not designed for the RV industry. It's designed for the commercial side of North America. So it has to fit a wide array of people sizes. Um, we have guests 6'2", 6'4", comfortably riding in the Travato, um, but to specifically answer your question, um, they are not powered. The steering column is telescoping, um, but does not have tilt. Cookie is wondering if it has a dial for temp and air. A dial for temp and air. So I'm gonna cover that two different ways because I'm not 100% understanding the question, but the air conditioning system for the coach itself is thermostatically controlled. Um, so it's digitally thermostatically controlled and then you can pair that up with your Bluetooth um, to control using a smartphone or tablet. But inside the ProMaster with respect to the cabin air conditioning system, um, it does have the HVAC controls to um, regulate the um, cold or warmth of the cabin system. Okay. Um, how, lo how low will that battery go before the auto start will, will kick in? Uh, in terms of state of charge, um, the auto start is designed to automatically kick in and charge the, recharge the batteries for an hour um, once the state of charge gauge gets between 25 and 35 percent. Now with the recalibrated state of charge gauge, it may actually be slightly lower, um, but that's a pretty, good, uh, a pretty good ballpark for it, 25 to 35 percent. We had an email come in before the webcast. <coughs> uh, it was from Richard. He can't watch, but he has some really good questions. You bet. Uh, and I think <coughs> I'll just run through them all together. Um, just can you generally speak about battery management for a typical day of driving and camping? You bet. You know, should you turn the system off overnight as soon as you know you're done with the fridge and, and leaving that closed, assuming that's the only power draw overnight? Yeah. So. Um, you may have seen we now have the Pure 3 system, not only in the Travato, but in the Winnebago Bolt. And <clears throat> the guests that we have that are out in Winnebago Bolts, 
Um, you know, they don't have the capability of using the auto start, but really they're using it, they're, they're using the Bolt as a touring coach to travel from point A to point B, but to maintain just complete coach use while traveling. So you can thermostatically control that air, keep it 68 degrees as you travel, and you never have to worry about anything because the under the hood alternator is recharging that energy pack. So the best use for the Pure 3 system is to literally turn it on and leave it on all the time. The only thing that you may want to consider turning on and off would be the inverter. And you can turn the inverter on and off. And the reason why you would want to do so is if you know that you do not have a need for electricity. So if you're traveling in cool climates or you're traveling down the road and you know that you are not going to have a need for air conditioning um, or the microwave or the microwave and convection oven, you can turn that inverter off and that will save some energy draw on the Pure 3 system. Um, not a ton, but certainly enough to extend your RVing. What we would not recommend, however, is overnight turning the state of charge gauge or turning the entire Pure 3 system off because then in essence, you've put the coach in storage mode, um, which means the refrigerator will no longer continue to cool. You'll have no lights. Your Trumacombi system won't work. And basically it's in a storage mode. Which links into the question that we always get is how long does it last? Yep. And if so, you're sitting there overnight with nothing really drawing or nothing significant drawing. Yeah, I mean, we see days and days and days of use with just 12 volt loads. Um, you'll have 200, depending upon the year, 200 to 230 watts of solar um, recharging that Pier 3 pack. You have the, the um, auto start, but in 12 volt mode, um, you're going to go days and days and days. And with respect to electricity, um, electrical use, um, a pretty good rule of thumb with the overhead air conditioner. Um, it's field tested to run about eight to nine hours. Um, we typically see more in the along the lines of six to eight hours in terms of usage of the air conditioning system. Again, you've got 8,700 watt hours within this Pure 3 pack. Uh, the National Parks Edition and the Bolt has 11,600. So that fourth cell, um, you know, we've seen some reports of 10, 11 hours of air conditioning use, you know, at pretty good temps where you see temperatures, you know, in that 80, 90 degree range and an interior cabin temperature of around 72 degrees. Um, we have a lot of guests where we're always seeking feedback. Typically with the Travato, we see about six to eight hours using the air conditioning system. And if you have that fourth cell, um, typically closer to 10. Would you agree? I would agree. And okay. I, I mean, it's just the nature of the unit. So many of them <clears> are hopping in and driving to the next destination that they're recharging fully and it's yeah. really an issue. So Richard continues, this is a great email. Um, does the high capacity alternator need high idle or 1500 RPMs to work or will driving at a slower engine uh, RPM also allow for charging the lithium battery? Yeah, great question. With respect to the under the hood alternator, when it recharges that Pier 3 pack, when we kick in auto start mode, as an example, with the high idle mode option that we order from ProMaster, it will trigger in at 1600 RPMs. There is a dramatic difference in the recharge rate or the replenishment rate if you are 1600 RPMs or above. Once you drop below 1600 RPMs, it's really gonna be nothing more than a trickle charge. But when you're heading down the road above that, it's fast. Yep, very fast. In fact, um, you know, when, when these first came out uh, a couple of years ago, um, really, you know, the, the branding was that it would recharge in about an hour and 40 minutes. We're seeing recharge times much, much lower than that. Um, how long does it take to charge from zero uh, just being plugged into shore power? To recharge from zero. Which we don't know from zero here, but we know from low that it, we know overnight does it. <laughs> yeah, overnight does it, um, but um, obviously the recharge rate with the shoreline plug-in is much lower. Um, you, you know, it, it would take several hours to do so um, if you're plugged in, but in most of those situations, you're already plugged in and you have the need for electricity. So really, you know, it, it's not like you're plugging in with an EV or electrical vehicle application and then taking off and going, because you'd use the alternator off the engine first. So really that shoreline is more of a maintainer. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> Tim, flipping back to a 59K, yeah. is wondering how long it would take for the alternator to recharge an AGM, the AGM battery pack. Um, that's a really good question and um, not long whatsoever. 
Um, I'm thinking of times where um, we've had a guest take a coach and run it completely down and then we literally tie in the booster switch to have the engine provide power to the coach. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to guess an exact time, but not very long at all. Great. So some great questions today and we're grateful for that because that means that we can cover things that are important to you. So I want to thank all of you for joining us today as today we covered mid-year running line change improvements to the 2020 Winnebago Touring Coach Travato. Uh, we covered both the exterior, interior, as well as lithium changes in the 59G, 59GL, and the 59K and 59KL uh, here in our marketing studio, only one mile north of the Winnebago factory here in Forest City, Iowa. We will continue to keep our chat lines open after the webcast um, so we can cover things that are important to you. Also keep in mind that the chat feature that we have on our website on Litson.com is staffed by true factory trained Litson RV consultants during normal business hours. So um, you're not speaking to a bot, you're not speaking to a third party agency, um, you're working directly with our team um, of factory trained and RVDA trained uh, team members here at Litson RV. Uh, I want to thank Heidi for moderating our chat, our marketing team, Rhonda, Hope, and Maggie uh, for such great work. Be sure to check out our full length educational orientation and walk around video um, that we offer in our video library and on each vehicle display page. Um, one thing that gets a real high amount of, of view traffic is we actually have um, what people rave about in terms of our Google reviews and Facebook reviews that half day educational orientation, we have that packed into um, about an hour or two video in which we walk through the educational orientation for a Travato. So um, some great content for you. Um, but again, if you do have questions, chat in to our team members. And again, during normal business hours, you're speaking to a true Listen RV professional. Uh, so again, also, if you have additional questions, um, remember that any of our factory trained uh, sales consultants uh, can go live with a click of a button and do a live virtual appointment from the comfort of your own home or office to cover the things that are important to you on any of our in-stock RVs here at Litson RV. Again, thank you for joining us today.